Here, there is a united spirit of perseverance that transcends race or politics. It flows across this Great Lakes state, rising up like the smoke from a tasty brat. From the bluffs of La Crosse, to the badgers of Madison, to the shores of Lake Michigan, all across its small towns, with people as sweet as a creamy frozen custard. That passionate spirit simply summed up in three words. We have already shown you Milwaukee, Door County, and the Wisconsin Dells. All right now, let's show you the rest of Wisconsin after I have one more cheese curd. Mm. Welcome to Wisconsin. Scenic water getaways, great food, and passionate people, I believe, makes Wisconsin one of the best states to visit or live in. That is, if you don't mind a cold winter. We will take you to the epicenter of that Wisconsin passion as we show Green Bay and go inside of football's most legendary stadium. Show you some eateries and places around Lambeau Field like Tidal Town and Bay Beach on the shores of Green Bay. Another source of Wisconsin's passionate spirit is in its capital city, Madison, home of the University of Wisconsin. We'll explore lively State Street, Memorial Union Terrace, as well as some other things you can do in this fun city. If you love water scenery, you'll love Wisconsin. It is bordered to the north and east by two of the world's largest lakes. We showed its Lake Michigan coastline in our Milwaukee and Door County videos. In this video, we take you to its northern border along the Lake Superior shoreline and cruise out into the Apostle Islands where you'll find distinct rock formations, sea caves, and lighthouses. Wisconsin's western border has 200 miles of shoreline of the Mississippi River, where the city of La Crosse lies, with beautiful bluffs and bike trails. With over 15,000 lakes, there's plenty of inland water fun, like Lake Geneva. We'll travel to some quaint small towns across the state, like Montello, Oshkosh, Ashland, Bayfield, Sauk City, Spring Green, Hurley, Manaqua, and Duluth. Yeah, I know that's in Minnesota, but it's close enough, so we are going to claim it as part of Wisconsin. So grab a brat or a butter burger or maybe some frozen custard. It's time to explore the rest of the dairy state. We start our Wisconsin tour in the city of Green Bay, the third largest city in the state. Its downtown sits on the Fox River at the south end of the Bay of Green Bay, which is an arm of Lake Michigan and is about a 45 minute drive to Door County. Oh, there happens to be a football team here too, you may have heard of. The Green Bay Blizzard will play right here at the Resch Expo Center, along with the Green Bay Gamblers, an ice hockey team, and across the street, another football team. The Packers have been playing at Lambeau Field since it opened in 1957, then City Stadium, and eight years later named after Packers founder, player, and longtime coach Earl Lambeau. It is the oldest continually operating stadium in the NFL, and only behind Wrigley Field and Fenway Park as the longest tenured venue for a sports team. The Packers are actually owned by the community. To be exact, some 360,000 stockholders. They have sold out every game since 1960, with an average wait time to be a season ticket holder of 30 years. So you wonder, how did I get inside the stadium? Well, every year to start the preseason, they have family night. 
which is basically watching a practice. The players come out on the field with their families, and at the end, there's fireworks. They had 71,000 tickets sold, and 65,000 people showed up. Again, this is just for practice. Just demonstrates the passion of Packer fans. The field nickname, the Frozen Tundra, as these dedicated fans will sit on these aluminum benches in freezing temperatures shouting. <laughs> on this night, a new era began with Jordan Love looking to carry the torch of great Packer quarterbacks. Packer fans known for their great tailgating. I wish you could smell through the video. It smells absolutely great. Sausages, brats, Green Bay style. University of Wisconsin representing here. A little cha-cha slide with all the Packer fans. Happened to run into Chad, who was the driver of the Army Duck Boat Tour we did in the Wisconsin Dells. On the west side of Lambeau Field is Town, a recreational dining area. Although a great gathering place for before and after a game, also a nice place to visit year-round. There's a rooftop indoor and outdoor bar with gas fireplaces. There's a large public park area with outdoor games, fitness activities. Mommy, he has a puppy in his backpack. A 40-yard dash track, a football field, there's an ice skating rink and a tubing hill, as well as a restaurant and brewery, a top golf swing suite, and bocce ball court. On the east side of the stadium is the Don Hudson Center, the indoor training facility of the Packers in Ray Nitsky Field. And another block further to the west are a couple of good sports bar and grills. There's Anduzzi's Sports Club with Mexican and Italian dishes with elevated seating and a green space entertainment area. Across the street is the Stadium View Bar and Restaurant, a popular spot for tailgate parties with a large outdoor stage of live music. Six miles north of Lambeau Field, on the shores of Green Bay, is Bay Beach Amusement Park, probably geared for younger kids. It is open from early May to late September. This is a unique park in that there's no admission or parking fee. Ride tickets are 25 cents each. Yes, I said that right, a quarter. Rides require anywhere from one to four tickets, but even at four tickets, that's a dollar. Among the rides, a coaster, Ferris wheel, bumper cars, a train, and water slide. There's concessions with pizza, burgers, and dogs. Across the street is Castle Carts, an amusement center with go-karts, many golf, batting cages, and an arcade. And there's also Bay Beach Wildlife Sanctuary that has trails and a nature center. We now begin to make our way to Madison, but on the way, a couple of stops. About 50 miles downstream from Green Bay on the Fox River is the city of Oshkosh on the shores of Lake Winnebago, which is one of the country's largest freshwater lakes. The downtown, as well as the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh, sits right on the Fox River. Oshkosh is home to the world's largest air show, which takes place in late July. It lasts for a week and is a mecca for aviation fans. Certainly, if you are up here in late July, you'll want to check it out. Our next city is between the Wisconsin Dells and Oshkosh, about an hour north of Madison. It is Montello. In its downtown at Daggett Memorial Park are cascading waterfalls from a granite quarry, which was where the materials of Grant's tomb came from. Ran into friendly landscaper Wayne, who told me the history of how there was once a Catholic church at the top of the protruding granite, which was removed when the mining began, but now a smaller scale of the church sits at the top. Montello has many trails and parks, great for hiking, fishing, ATVing, and snowmobiling in winter. It is a prototypical Wisconsin small town, friendly people. There's a good Amish bakery here. Along with Lake Montello, there's Buffalo Lake, which is really shaped like a very wide river.
We now arrive in Wisconsin's capital city. Madison is one of only two major U.S. cities built on an isthmus. That is a narrow strip of land that separates two large bodies of water, Seattle being the other one. Here you have Lake Monona to the south and Lake Mendota to the north. Madison is also one of the top cycling cities in the U.S., most recently rated second best in the country with its extensive bike paths. This capital, the largest building in Madison at 284 feet, was built in 1970. It is only three feet shorter than the U.S. Capitol. The statue at the top holds a globe with an eagle in her left hand and her right arm outstretched to symbolize forward, which is the state model. She wears a helmet with the state animal, the badger, on top. I was impressed how open the Capitol was. You can just walk right in and take a look at the impressive architecture. This dome is the largest dome by volume in the U.S. It is also the only granite dome in the U.S. There's a sixth floor museum and an observation deck. Free tours are offered daily year round. On Saturdays around the Capitol from April through November is the Dane County Farmers Market. I think this was the best farmers market I've seen. There were vendors completely surrounding the perimeter of the Capitol Square. There's live music. You can pick up some fresh cheese curds from Curd Girl. And hey, for those of you who walk your dogs for excessive walking on hot pavement, get a Kurgle backpack. Not only saves your dog stress, but makes it easier for you. I put a link in the description below. The center of entertainment, shopping, dining, and nightlife is on State Street, which runs from the Capitol to the university campus. It's a vibrant pedestrian mall with more than 300 establishments. There's State Street Brats, a Badger sports bar with patio seating. Across the street, there's Hawks Bar and Grill, Dubai Mediterranean Restaurant and Bar, Parthenon Euros. Really, any style of food is here. Also, the Orpheum, a live performance and musical theater. The University of Wisconsin has a beautiful campus with lakeside views, modern facilities, blended in with historic landmarks, lots of green space. The Badgers football team plays in Camp Randall Stadium, built the same year as the Capitol in 1917. It currently holds over 76,000 people. The Badgers compete in the Big Ten Conference. At the north end of the campus is Memorial Union Terrace. This is a great hangout spot regardless if you are a student or not. It's a nice colorful terrace under beautiful oaks overlooking Lake Mendota. There are several eateries here, like the Brat Stand, with brats, burgers, as well as a variety of vegan options. This was the best brat I had in Wisconsin, and Bella said it was the best corn on the cob she's ever had. You can also rent kayaks, paddle boards, $15 for students or $17 for non-students. About nine miles away on the north shore of Lake Mendota is Betty Lou Cruises, where you can take a boat tour around the Governor's Mansion, Lakeshore Estates, and the University from end of May to mid-October. Cruises range from $39 to $59 and includes food and complimentary soda. There's also the Midnight Splash Cruise that you can charter for up to 40 people. Runs about $1,250 for four hours. A mile south of Camp Randall Stadium is Henry Villas Zoo, which is one of the only handful of admission-free zoos in the country. Absolutely free. It is home to over 650 animals from all over the world, with over 115 species. There's a tropical rainforest, an arctic passage, a children's zoo, a big cat exhibit, a discovery center, and herpetarium with reptiles, amphibians, and fish. Certainly can't beat the price. It's worth a visit. We head an hour southeast of Madison to Lake Geneva, which is close to the Illinois border, just 90 minutes from Chicago. We are going to focus mostly on the lake, but also know that there is some good hiking, biking, ziplining, golf courses, 
petting zoos, and museums here, so really a great place to spend a few days. The Lake Geneva shore path is 26 miles long, 21 miles along the shore, and another 5 miles weaving in and out of wooded areas. One of the most gorgeous bike multi-use trails in Wisconsin. There's Riviera Beach. There's an admission charge of $10 from Memorial Day to Labor Day when lifeguards are on duty. The most popular activity here, though, is the boat tours. At the downtown marina, there are several options with Lake Geneva cruises. There's the Full Lake Cruise, a two-hour narrated tour. It is $52 for adults and $35 for children 4 to 17. This is one of the few places where the mail is still delivered by boat. And one of the most popular cruises here is the mail boat tour, a couple of dollars more, and it's two and a half hours long. There's also an hour-long Best of the Lake cruise that tours about half of the lake. It is $39 for adults and $25 for children. There are several theme cruises like a Sunday brunch buffet, a supper club dinner, a cocktail hour cruise, and an ice cream social cruise. You can also charter these restored steam yachts for two to three hours, like the Luis here, built in 1902. They start at about 1700, but includes up to 30 passengers. If you would like to do your own touring of the lake, there's Elmer's boat rentals with pontoons available. Happened to run into Josiah here. I run a golf cart rental company on Anna Maria Island, and I am so thankful. And I ran into Tampa Aerial Media. What's up? We went to Gatlinburg because we saw oh. your Gatlinburg video. Now, was it the recent Gatlinburg video? Yeah. Or, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> he also has a YouTube channel that gives good info for entrepreneurs on how to run a business with biblical principles. Also at Lake Geneva, there's the farmer's market from Thursdays through Sundays from May through October. For waterside dining, there's the Barik Bistro and Wine Bar, the Oak Fire, a Swedish Midwestern pizza restaurant, and next to that, there's Popeyes on Lake Geneva with a large outdoor patio, and Speedo's Harborside Pub and Grill with sidewalk seating. Lake Geneva also has a nice, quaint, Main Street-style walkable downtown with vintage street lamps, benches, a wide variety of shops, from boutiques to clothing to gifts. This is also a great place for Oktoberfest, and during Christmas season, there is the Festival of Lights. Now, we start to head northwest towards La Crosse, but first, a couple of stops. We go to the farming village of Sauk City, located between Madison and the Wisconsin Dells on the banks of the Wisconsin River. It's a good place to live if you like the small town charm, yet don't want to be too far from the bigger cities. This is where the first Culver's restaurant started. No, it was originally an A&W stand back in Wisconsin, Sauk City. Uh, for the longest time, Craig didn't know what he wanted to do, so they just never did anything with A&W. But eventually, uh, he get, got back into the swing of things, and he decided to open up their own brand, uh, Culver's, um, in 1984. Culver's a fast food place, yet has the quality of a sit-down restaurant with Midwestern hospitality. Known for their butter burgers, frozen custard, and cheese curds. The difference between custard and ice cream is, custard is made with buttermilk and egg yolks. So that makes it more of a creamier, smooth uh, texture for, for whoever's eating your custard. Today, Culver's is in 24 states, so after watching this video and hungering for some tasty Wisconsin food, you just might have a Culver's near you. I know in Florida, they are growing fast because of all the Midwesterners who vacation down there. In fact, these shots here with Nick was filmed at the Brandon, Florida Culver's. The areas around Sauk City just has some of the most beautiful farmlands. We follow the Wisconsin River west along Highway 60. As you go further west, you start to see more hills and bluffs. In the village of Spring Green is another place to check out. The House on the Rock is a complex of architecturally unique rooms, streets, gardens, and shops designed by Alex Gordon, which began in 1945 to build a man-made retreat, a house uniquely protruding from a rock. 
and it evolved into displays and collections of the exotic, the unusual, and the amazing. It has the largest carousel in the world. Too bad we weren't able to ride it though, bummer. This probably takes a good three to four hours if you want to really see everything. No, there is a lot of walking. It is $33 for adults, $18 for kids 7 to 17, and $5 for children 6 and under. We start to approach the western border of Wisconsin in the Mississippi Valley. More scenic farmlands and gorgeous towering bluffs surround the region around La Crosse. Sitting on the banks of the Mississippi River, La Crosse is one of the most beautiful cities in Wisconsin. Riverside Park in downtown hosts events such as Riverfest, which happens on the 4th of July weekend, also Oktoberfest, and Rotary Lights that happens during the holidays, which draws over 130,000 visitors per year. You can also take a paddle wheel cruise on the La Crosse Queen. A 90 minute cruise is $19 for adults and $10 for children 1 to 11. They also have a pizza cruise and a Sunday brunch cruise. On the opposite side of the river is Pettibone Park that has a disc golf course, walking trails, fishing docks, and a beach. La Crosse has done a great job retaining its historic character, yet a very modern city. Most of the buildings in the Main Street District were built between the 1860s and 1940s. Today, they are specialty shops, numerous restaurants, and a wide variety of entertainment and museums. La Crosse has been listed as the 19th best college town in the U.S. with the University of Wisconsin La Crosse here, considered among the nation's elite universities. Grandad Bluff is a city park on the east side of La Crosse. This 600-foot bluff gives one of the best views of the city and the Mississippi Valley, and you can see Minnesota and Iowa from here. It's been rated the most scenic view in the state. The drive up Grandad Bluff, very scenic as well, along a winding road, takes about 10 minutes to get to the top, and just amazing during the fall colors. The area around La Crosse, also referred to as the Coulee region, which comes from a French word meaning to flow, referring to all the rivers and streams in this valley, including the mighty Mississippi River. There are also five miles of multi-use limestone trails called the Gateway Trail System. Here, there's trails for all skill levels of bikers. Also a little bike repair station in the parking area of Grandad Bluff. Nestled within the bluffs is Forest Hills Public Golf Course. It features a 19th hole so that you can settle your bets after the 18-hole course. All right now, we head about four hours to the north, to Duluth, Minnesota. Since we are entering Viking country, for my own protection, I have to take off my cheese head. Wanted to include this in the Wisconsin video because I think it's a great spot just over the Wisconsin border on Lake Superior. We are only going to cover the areas around the famous lift bridge, but Duluth is known to have lots of outdoor adventure. At some point, we'll have to do a northern Minnesota video. The lift bridge spans the Duluth Ship Canal. Built in 1905, it originally used a gondola to transport people, but modified in 1929 to accommodate automobile traffic. Today, it takes three minutes to lift the roadway up to 120 feet with cement counterweights weighing 5,000 tons sliding down on either side of the bridge. It allows cars to travel to the Minnesota Point shoreline for another four miles to Park Point Beach. On both sides of the canal are two long walkable piers with lighthouses, the Duluth North Pier Light and the South Pier Light. 
This strip of land on the north side of the bridge, south of I-35, is Canal Park with lots of eateries, shopping, lodging, and a waterside trail. Near the base of the bridge is Grandma's Saloon and Grill, a vintage restaurant with an elevated outdoor deck, and Grandma's Boxcar for ice cream. Also, the Lake Superior Visitor Maritime Center is here. And this is the south end of the Lake Walk, a nearly eight mile long promenade stretching all the way to Brighton Beach, just north of downtown Duluth. There are benches along the way to just sit and watch the ships. Also, Memorial Day through Labor Day, there are carriage rides with top hat carriages. On the northwest side of the Duluth Harbor Basin, as well as the Great Lakes Aquarium, there is Vista Fleet with sightseeing and dining cruises. A two-hour dining cruise is $45 for adults, $25 for children 3 to 12. Now let's head back into Wisconsin. I can put my cheese head back on. A look at sunset over the St. Louis River and sunrise over the Superior Entry Inlet. The strip of land to the left is Minnesota Point Beach and to the right of the inlet is Wisconsin Point. There's a quiet beach here on the northwest corner of Wisconsin. A jetty leads out to the Superior Entry South Breakwater Light. We take Wisconsin Highway 13 east to Cornucopia Harbor. This is a nice little stop on your way across the northern coast. There's an artisan well here to fill up your water bottles for free. A nice long pier. You can find fresh smoked fish at the Fish Shed Restaurant. The beach here is a good place to swim with the shallow Siskiwit Bay. Further down, about 17 miles west of Bayfield, is Myers Beach. Here you'll find Myers Beach kayaking, where you can rent or take a tour of the Apostle Islands by kayak and get up close to the sea caves. But if you want to see these islands by motorized boat, Bayfield is the gateway to the Apostle Islands. You can take your car or bike on the Madeline Island Ferry, which is the largest of the Apostle Islands and the only Apostle Island open to commercial development. There you can hike, bike, kayak, golf, shop, dine, or stay in cottages on the shores of Lake Superior. See MadelineIsland.com for more info. Bayfield is listed among the most beautiful towns in Wisconsin. In 2023, was listed as the 23rd best place to go in the U.S. Also one of the top 10 coastal towns by USA Today and considered Wisconsin's berry capital. There's the Bayfield Apple Festival that happens in early October. In the summers, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, they have concerts by the lake in Memorial Park. So certainly worth checking out if you are looking for a new northern getaway. At the Bayfield Pier is where you can hop aboard an Apostle Islands boat tour. They have several tours, including one of the Michigan Lighthouses, since we are close to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Some of the tours will take you on the islands, like Stockton Island or Oak Island. I did the most popular, the Grand Tour, which is a 55-mile cruise. It doesn't stop at any of the islands, but you see several islands. It is $54 for adults and $33 for children, 6 through 12. Children under 6 are a dollar. Cruises frequently sell out, and I would recommend in the summer to get in line 30 to 45 minutes in advance because you want to see up top on the second deck. I was a little late, but still lucked out. While I didn't get a seat up top, I was able to sit in the outdoor area on the back of the ship. In my opinion, it's better than being inside. There are 22 islands that make up the Apostle Islands. The ones with the sea caves are Sand, Stockton, Otter, and Madeline Islands. But the island with the most impressive sea caves are at Devil's Island, which you see here. These sea caves form by the often choppy waters of Lake Superior, eroding the rocks over time. There's the Devil's Island Light you can take a tour of during summer months if you want to boat or kayak to the island. Also the Raspberry Island Lighthouse. 
All right, let's head back to Bayfield and show you some of the restaurants you can dine at for before or after your cruise. Just across the street from the pier is Pier Plaza, a seafood restaurant with a deck overlooking the bay. And there's the Bayfield Inn with rooftop dining with live music during the summer. We now head back to the south part of the Shawamagan Bay to Ashland. This was once a center for lumbering and brownstone mining as well as shipping. Many original brownstone structures are still standing here. Today it is known as the mural capital of Wisconsin. Unfortunately, I didn't know that when I went through here, so didn't film many, but I can show you its beautiful shoreline. There's Maslowski's Park and Beach area. This is a shallow, sandy swimming beach with a playground, pavilion, restrooms, and an artisan well. It's dog friendly and a good place to enjoy the Shawamigan Bay, which is good for fishing, especially trout and salmon. Across the street, there's Patience Park, with over two miles of ADA accessible trails, playground, and camping with six tent sites and seven RV sites. At Maslowski's Park, there is the Blue Wave Inn and Sandbar Restaurant. This is a boutique-style hotel right on the water with a sandbar restaurant that has outdoor patio seating. Here, you can rent kayaks with Solstice Outdoors. A single kayak is $25 for half day or $35 for a double kayak. There's a nice paved trail along the waterfront here, which runs for two miles to the Ashland Marina. And there begins the Tri-County Corridor Trail, which runs for 60 miles past Amnicon Falls State Park, with most of it being gravel surface on an abandoned rail bed. Also at Ashland Marina is Crayer Park, another great place to enjoy the water, with a couple of linear green space areas that jet out into the bay. There's also Crayer RV Park, which is run by the city. It has 33 RV sites with water and electricity, but no sewer. Starting to near the end of our video as we travel through a couple of more small towns. Heading back towards Green Bay, about 40 minutes southeast of Ashland, I found a little rustic town of Hurley. A good stop for lodging and food. The Munch Bar and Tacos is a prototypical dive bar with a pool table. Good portions of food at a good price, but they don't take credit cards. There is also good inexpensive lodging here. The Days Inn had good clean rooms and a nice outdoor pool area. We arrive at our final city. Manaqua is a lot like Lake Geneva. It's a popular recreational area surrounded by lakes, rivers, and streams, popular for boating, swimming, fishing, but also hiking, biking, and ATVing, and in the winter months, snowmobiling at your boat club, Manaqua. You can not only rent pontoons, but also ATVs and snowmobiles. There's Torpy Park and Beach. This is a well-maintained, recently renovated park with restroom showers, large picnic shelters, barbecue grills, tennis and sand volleyball courts, and in the winter months, there's an ice skating rink. There's also a very highly reviewed coffee shop here in the community of Woodruff called Milky Way Coffee in a former bank building. You can dine in or drive through. Bella said it was great, and believe me, she knows fine coffee when she tastes it. As well as water fun, Manaqua also has a nice walkable Main Street style downtown, retaining much of its vintage heritage in its architecture. This was a former logging town. The Milwaukee Road Railroad is what originally grew this town. There are two railroad trestles that are still intact and part of what is now the Bearskin State Trail, a hiking and biking trail in summer and snowmobiling in winter. In our final stop, just a mile south of the downtown district, is Holiday Acres Stables. Which, along with horse and pony rides, there is Settler's Mill with go-karts, mini golf, a game room, and you can taste some delicious frozen custard. Well, I hope you have enjoyed our four video series of Wisconsin. 
I think it has some of the best summer getaways in the U.S. And there are really some great places, waterfalls, and parks here that I didn't even show. I was just very limited with my time and didn't do enough research. I apologize. So I'd love to hear your thoughts, the places you visited. We are Tampa Aerial Media. We film travel promos across the USA for stock footage, or if you'd like to hire us to film your city, region, or resort, contact us at info at tampaaerialmedia.com. Well, good news. We are heading back to the Smoky Mountain, Appalachia region, showing the fall colors of Knoxville, Greenville, and finally the great city of Atlanta. Please pray for me dealing with that traffic, and maybe including Athens as well. Go dogs. And to the people of Wisconsin, thank you very much for your hospitality. Go Pack Go! From the Dairy State, I wish blessings to you, wherever you may be. Thank you for watching. One more cheese curd.